Yo, what's going on? You rocking with Joey Blaze, and you're now tuned in to DME TV. Way too much flex, not enough hustle. Things are working out. I got it off the muscle. Just a year ago, I was knee deep in the struggle, but now they looking cause they never. Blaze, what's been going on, man? Not much, not much, man. Just always working, trying to stay busy. I see that, man. We finally get to catch up, man. Yeah, I know. We'll be going back and forth for a yeah. while, man. So yeah, but hey, yeah, but you see, that's how the best interviews come about, man. Okay. You know, shit. Like, come tell people, man. Tell everybody where you're from. Oh, but I born and raised in Columbia, South Carolina, Irmo to be exact. It's like a county on the south side. That's what many people know about it, so I just say Columbia a lot of times. Where, where? So, how was it growing up over in Irmo? You know what I'm saying? It definitely had its ups and downs, but the thing I like about it mostly brought the core values to me is like very family oriented. Taught me like the grind, the hustle. That's why I get my work ethic from. That's why I go so hard. It's just and the environment I put that in you. So I definitely appreciate Irma for that. Where, where? That's what's up, man. So coming out of Columbia, um, how have you seen the music, the music scene grow over, you know, the last three to five years? I've definitely seen it growing a lot from the time I started writing. I think Boss G was popping at the time. Like that's when, you know, say everybody was starting to pay attention. But every year I've seen like a new artist come out, so it's definitely in the right direction. Okay. We just need somebody to put that in it to open that door, then the rest will follow. It's definitely growing up. Okay, so who was like one of your favorite artists out of the out of let's say Columbia area? Columbia area, I would definitely say I was rocking with Boss G a lot because I was DJ Ty. We was real like cool growing up, so he was okay. definitely like an influence as far as like the Columbia scene. So pay close attention to him. Okay, okay, that's what's up. So go ahead and tell the people, man. I, I know you got a new project. You're working on a new project. Tell us, gonna tell us about that project. Oh yeah, most definitely. Project I've been working on for quite some time now. It's called Time Flies. It's definitely. It'll actually be my first official project. It's real personal, real deep. I want to make sure I came correct the first time. It's personal. I put my whole life into this project. It has something for everybody on there. If you've been through something as far as losing somebody, as far as a relationship, family member, or job, or just being like homeless, like you definitely relate to this. It's something for everybody. So. Okay, okay. So you, you make that timeless music then? Oh, yeah. That's, that's what I try to do every time I hit the booth, man. Okay, so let's let's talk about because we don't we don't talk about this enough. Let's talk about your process of when you picking beats or getting beats punched out. Take right. take me through the process. The process for me, um, I usually like I write a lot and mm -hmm. I don't try to necessarily try to mess the lyrics with the beat. But my beat selection, I really go with the vibe. I know um, I don't really pay attention to like the drums. Like it really don't have to be hard hand for me. Like I rather for you to feel my words. Than the actual beat, but I got good producers on my team to help me paint okay. that picture. So a hard beat never, never hurts. Okay, N name those producers for us. Oh, um, my three in-house producers: my man Jay Block, born and raised on um, Irmo with me. We've been tight for like since kindergarten. So him, um, my man Young Crip, he's um out of Chicago. He's done like a lot of um work as far as the drill scene. Then my man Black Assassin, he's in all uh, Durham, North Carolina. So. Those are kind of like my three go-to guys. They paint the sound for me. Okay, so you say you do a lot of writing. So you, do you take that hook and have them punch the beat out to it? Or, I mean, how, how does that yeah, work for um, you? Yeah, because before they even send me anything, I'll either call them or like FaceTime them and be like, yo, let me rap this verse to you. Mm -hmm. And then after um, that, they'll be like, I think I got the perfect thing. And then just kind of like mesh it together. If I need them to slow it down and speed it up, they'll just make it tailor fit for me. Okay. So I mean, what are what are what you expecting the people to take from this EP? Oh, just to feel the the pain, like the energy, because it's this is a roller coaster, man. It gets from like sad to happy, and then just like every emotion you can go through. It's like mm -hmm. after you done listening to the project, I just want you want them to feel like wow, that was amazing. Like it definitely has replay value in my opinion. So okay, that's gonna definitely be one of the better projects that's been on in a while. Okay, so uh, me, w w when do you plan on releasing the EP? Um, that's still up in the air. Okay. We're definitely aiming towards August. We're just waiting on some paperwork to get back. Um, first video for She Knows is coming out in the next couple of weeks. So okay. we're just trying to line all our ducks up so we can do it right. You know what I'm saying? 
Okay. First impression is everything with everybody. How, how many singles you gonna release from this project? Um, I'm, I'm aiming for three. I mean, like every track can be used as a single, but I definitely got three for sure. And then okay. after we get those three popping, that's where we gonna probably drop the full thing. Okay, that's that sounds like the magic number, man. Two and three. Yeah. I think a lot of people are dropping two or three singles and really pushing it. Um, what what what? How long are you, are you planning on pushing your first single? First single, I'm I'm aiming for like ninety days. Cause okay. Like, um, I'm trying to make sure it gets like everywhere. I don't want to just drop it. You know what I'm saying for like one week, don't get the response on one, then drop another. Yeah. One. I'm gonna definitely ride it out. You gonna ride it out, push it. Yeah, that's that's definitely the right thing to do, man. Ninety days is. From what you know, I've been told ninety days is is you know is that that number you definitely need to nothing less than ninety days. You know what I'm saying? Right, because the first rollout I had um back when I was just dropping joints like, on SoundCloud, I would like post a song up, like tag everybody and get the response on one song, so I was like right. on to the next. Right. But if I would have stuck with it, maybe it would have got somewhere. So that's why I'm gonna just right. give it like three months. Right, right, right. Okay. So before your EP, what other projects have you released that? People can go back and check and look on. You at least um, any mixtapes? No, um, mostly just um, freestyles. Um, I know we got um, a single released last year, NBA. That's been getting good feedback. That's everywhere. Um, SoundCloud, iTunes, Tidal, Spotify, anything streaming, you can catch that on there. That's kind of like the promotional single we had at the time. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's just freestyles. I did one like, I think like every Friday for like two months straight. So okay. all of those on my SoundCloud, okay. which is it's underscore Joey underscore Blaze. Just type that in, it'll be like the first one to come up. Okay. Now, I know you say freestyle, you usually go up top, or because I know that's people throw that that word around freestyle, mm -hmm. and you know, I know coming up in the 80s, 90s, freestyle is like up top. Right. But I know a lot of people now, they don't really, most a lot of people like the writing. That, to me, that's not no problem, but what's your take on it? You, you, you think? Yeah, because it, it definitely has two meanings to it. Um, yeah. A couple of them was like straight off the top. Right. But I know, um, Another definition would just be like just writing on somebody else's beat, yeah. which is really not the proper term for like freestyle. But right. you could call it a cover, but I guess we just got so used to the term freestyle, just yeah. been rolling with that. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Well, I have a couple covers on on SoundCloud that you can okay. check out. Okay, that's definitely that's what's up. So, as an indie artist, man, what has been like the toughest, the toughest of the or. Uh, uh, what has been the obstacle obstacle that you can give other any other tips on? As far as like really put, creating your music, getting out there, you know, marketing promotion. You know, tell tell everybody, you know, your process. Well, I know the two hardest things for me was coming out the gate, just making sure you invest in like in the right places. Cause you know, as an indie artist, you're really funding all of this. You want to make sure that your money's going in the right spot. But, I mean, I want to say I took a couple of L's. It's really just lessons that like I learned from. So, I mean. Just move that going forward, and then also finding my sound. It's like when you're from your area, you want to make sure you have like your own sound, like your own team. That was mm -hmm. hard for me for a while because mm -hmm. I would just gravitate to um, SoundCloud and like YouTube a lot, which is nothing wrong with that. Right. Everybody don't have the funds or the front up for a producer, but that was my problem for the longest. Like I was sounding like Drake at one minute, mm -hmm. J Cole, and I was like, you know, what I'm saying we like we want to hear Blaze, so I kind of right. like fell back and then try to. Just figure out my own sound. Okay. So those are the two hardest things for me, but it'll make you stronger at the end, though. Okay. Cause they never know what's in the duffel Way too much flex, flex. not enough hustle uh, Things are working out, yeah. I got it off the muscle uh -huh. Just a year ago, I was knee deep in the struggle yeah. But now they looking cause they never know what's in the duffel 